What is up guys? We're back here with another BIOS overview, basically showing you what the BIOS is all about on a certain motherboard. The motherboard in question today is the ASRock Z390 Extreme 4. Now this BIOS will be pretty much the same across the different Z390 boards that they offer. The skin might be a little bit different, but the overall basic functionality should be the same. So the first time you load into the BIOS, you'll be in this easy mode. And this gives you pretty much everything that you need um, to get your PC up and running before you go ahead and get into Windows. Um, so up top here, we have just information. Um, you know, of course it says Z390 Extreme 4 and lets us know what version of the BIOS that we're running. So if you are doing an upgrade, you can see what version you have to see if it's outdated or something like that. Um, information on our processor, our processor speed and our total memory. And then down here it shows our DRAM configuration or information. Um, so, you know, you can see what's in each DIMM and how much and all of that stuff. And then you can enable your XMP profile. You just click here. Um, you know, you can set it to auto if you want, but if it does have an XMP profile, you can just click and your XMP profile is enabled. It's just that simple. Under storage configuration, this shows you, again, what ports have storage devices and what they are. Um, and you can go ahead and enable or disable RAID mode. Um, we have our time and date and we have our fan status. So we only have our CPU fan uh, running because this is a test bench. So uh, you can see the speed of that right there. And you can set up the different settings here. So the first thing you can do is just like change the settings. So we have it on standard. You can put it on performance or full speed and silent. Um, so if you wanna you know, crank those fans up, you can easily do that one click uh, for your CPU fan. Now under tools, there are some tools here. So I'll go ahead and click this. Um, we have instant flash, which allows you to easily flash your BIOS from a USB flash drive. Again, one of the easiest ways to do it, but another way you can do it if your motherboard is internet connected, um, meaning that you have it connected to the internet, um, you can actually flash from the internet to get the latest BIOS that's out there. You can go ahead and do that. And then we have fantastic tuning, and this allows you to go ahead and tune your fans, um, set up curves, and do that for all of the uh, fan headings or fan headers on the motherboard. Um, pretty simple to do, very easy, and a nice you know graphical interface here. Um, and then over here, you know, you can change your language and you have your live CPU temperature, motherboard temperature and voltages. So if you're having some issues, it might be temperature related. So you can see that stuff right here. And then boot priority of this is, of course, you know, your different boot drives and how they're going to boot. Um, so you can easily change these. See these little three lines right here. You just move that and you can move them up and down to set your boot priority. And again, this gives you everything that you need. Really, I, I believe I don't think there's anything missing um, unless you're doing overclocking. If you want to tune things and, you know, go in, into even more detail, you just go to advanced mode. So you either hit F6 or you just click this and now we're in advanced mode and you should be dropped into this main tab right here. And again, this gives us even more information about everything that's going on in our system. And we have my favorites. Now, I haven't added anything to this, but if there's a certain setting or you know something that you're changing a lot, you can add it to my favorites so you don't have to you know go through a few menus to find it. It will just be right in here. Now, if you're doing any type of tuning or anything like that, you're gonna be doing it in the OC Tweaker tab. And I like a few things that ASRock has done here. First, they have um, your targets up here. So if you're changing settings around, changing frequencies, you wanna know, you know what's that target frequency I'm going for, and it will have it uh, right here. And then um, they have everything in these little folders. This makes it really easy to find different settings. So each thing has a folder. So we go into our CPU configuration and this is everything to do with your CPU. So you can change ratio, ratios, you can you know, change a whole bunch of different stuff, you know, turn Intel speed step and turbo boost and all that stuff on and off, change your power limits, which I would suggest if you are overclocking and things like that. So you can do all of that right here and we go out to DRAM configuration. Again, this is um, everything to do with your DRAM. So you can set up your timings, of course, enable or disable XMP profiles, you know, all the stuff with your timings, it's all in here. You can change it all. Um, you know, they have everything in here. And then we have voltage configuration, and this is all your voltages. Of course, you're gonna wanna change your CPU core voltage. 
if you are overclocking and likely mess with your load line calibration, but all of your voltages are in here, DRAM voltage, everything is right in here. So that's kind of like the OC tweaker. Again, all of the settings that you would want for overclocking are all right in here. And you can save up to five profiles. So maybe you have say like a gaming profile, an overclocking profile, maybe an LN2 profile. You can save and load all that stuff right here. Super easy to do. Under advanced, this is everything that's going on besides kind of like your overclocking settings. So CPU configuration, you know, you can enable, enable hyper threading, your active cores, all the different C states you can enable or disable, all that kind of stuff that you may want to enable or disable on the CPU, you could go ahead and do that. Chipset configuration, you know, you can turn like the onboard graphics on, you can set up your PCI Express link speeds, they should be all set to auto, um, but you can go ahead and change all that kind of stuff if you want, you can enable or disable the onboard LAN. Um, storage configuration, this of course is your different storage and you can see everything that's connected and if you go into one, you can actually get even more information and um, you can set different things if you want. Um, pretty simple to do on that. NVMe, of course, this just shows you information. If you wanted to go and actually edit your NVMe stuff, um, I believe you would just go into here. Actually, it doesn't allow you to do any of that stuff. I think the only the SATA ones are the only ones that you can like, you know, mess with settings. Um, under Thunderbolt, if you have Thunderbolt, you can go ahead and mess with it there. Super I/O, ACPI. USB, you should always have legacy USB support turned on. It's enabled by default, so you wouldn't have to change it. Um, but then you can enable or disable all the ports on the board. And then trusted computing, you can go ahead and change stuff there. Um, and then you can set up like the UEFI setup style. So as I said, when you load into the BIOS, in the BIOS you'll be in the easy mode. Um, this allows you to switch out of that easy mode and load into advanced mode all the time. So if you're always going into the advanced mode um, and you really don't use easy mode, then you can of course change this if you want. And then under tools, um, there are some interesting things here. There's text service. So if your board is internet connected, as I said, you can email text service. So say this is like your only internet connected device. Um, this allows you to contact text service and all of that, um, you know, right through the BIOS. You have easy RAID installer um, to set up RAID. You have instant flash and internet flash, which I talked about, secure backup and your network configuration. So as I said, you know, this board needs to be internet connected to do some of this other stuff. Um, if you're not installing Windows yet, you can set up your internet uh, network configuration. So set that all up um, pretty easily to do. You know, if you have like Comcast or something, it's just DHCP, auto IP, boom, and you're on the internet without having Windows installed. And then hardware monitor, I'll go all the way up to the top here. This gives you a full readout of your temperatures, your fan speeds, and your voltages. So again, if something's off, you can go ahead and kind of see what's going on before you load into Windows. And then again, you have your tuning here, so you can go into your fan tuning and set all that up. And you can, you know, here's the settings for each fan. So you can go ahead and set that up. Um, you know, and there's different things you can do for each fan header and all of that. And then we'll go over to security. You can set up supervisor's password and a user password. Um, and then under boots, you can set up your different boot options here. Um, of course, it's easier to do in the easy mode, I would say. Um, but you can go ahead and set all those up here and all that kind of stuff with boot setup. And then we're over to exit. So at the exit, I do like a few things. Um, one, they have the default. So there's so many times that I've just messed around in a BIOS and just totally messed something up. Um, and it's just nice to be able to just like load the default. Like, let me load the default. Let me start from the beginning. And they have that here. There's also boot override. So most of you, I would hope, would be installing Windows from a flash drive. And if you do that, you wanna load the flash drive first. And then when it does its restart, you want it to go to your hard drive. So, you know, before, before you had this boot override, you would have to set your boot priority to the flash drive first and then either hurry up when it's restarting and pull it out or you would have to go back into the BIOS and reset that boot priority. Here you can just boot to the disk first, like, you know, I hit this, hit enter, it boots to that flash drive first, and then when it does its restart, it will boot to that hard drive, it just makes it so much easier. So that is pretty much it, guys. This BIOS is really easy to navigate. It doesn't lag or have any issues. Um, everything is easy to find. There wasn't a setting that I couldn't find in this BIOS. Um, the easy mode is, easy it's super easy to use it's it's not the most like graphically intensive we've seen other ones that look 
far better, but it's functional and it works. So if you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And be sure to check out our full review of the Z390 Extreme 4, which I'll also link below. And um, that is basically it, guys. So we'll see you in the next video.